This video is sponsored by PotownStore.com, the best place to get yourself some TCG code cards. They are compatible with TCG Live and you can of course get everything on the website for 5% off using the coupon code ZAPDOISTCG. This video is also sponsored by CardMarket.com. This is a European platform where you're able to uh, buy and sell cards to people all across Europe. I personally use it every single day and you can do it as well. And you can use the referral name ZAPDOISTCG to help support the channel. This video is also sponsored by YourPlayMat.com. Uh, this is a platform where you're able to, of course, create your own custom playmat. They have, of course, uh, capabilities to ship worldwide and you can get 10% off by clicking the link down below. So definitely check it out. Last but not least is Dragon Shield, the best brand to protect your beautiful cards you can of course uh yeah there's links down below for us and european people and you can of course get your best quality uh, sleeves uh, available as well as deck boxes and binders thanks so much for sticking around with the commercials i hope you enjoyed today's upload if you do be sure to let me know by rocking the hell out of the like button and uh, yeah let's get this video going What's up, YouTube? It's Zamdays TCG here, and welcome back to our TCG video on my channel today. We have a very special guest, Stefan Eriksson. Introduce yourself. We're going to be talking about rotation today. Hello, everyone. My name is Stefan, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me here, Joshua. I'm uh, happy to hear it, and I must say, I always, I always uh, grin a little with your introduction. It's, uh, it's just your thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you have to uh, make it consistent, just like the decks I'm playing. So uh, the thing I know, is, I know. You, you have been playing for a long time. And uh, I see a lot of trophies and stuff behind you. So uh, tell me a little bit how long you've been playing. Yeah, I uh, I started playing in 05, if, if I remember correctly. Uh, <laughs> a warning here, like uh, this is based on my memory. So when I'm getting old, at least in Pokemon <laughs> terms, I think I'm pretty old. But uh, 05, yeah, yeah, a friend of mine uh, taught me how to play. And then I uh, played my first Nationals. That was my first event, actually, Danish Nationals 05. Wow, that's and a long the newest, time ago. That is, uh, yeah, 18 years. We're running at 18 years <laughs> right now. Um, and I think the set that was just released at Nationals at that moment was EX Emerald. Oh, these energies from that set are so beautiful. It, it was so pretty. And I remember the first pack I opened, I got one of them very pretty energies. I think it was just the grass energy. It doesn't matter. They're really pretty. Yeah, I played with them a lot throughout uh, my career. Uh, the reason why we had you on here is because you've been playing for a long time and people uh, want to be knowing about rotation. Rotation uh, is actually going to be happening in six days. So very scary <laughs> yeah. for newer players like, uh, oh, all the D block uh, cards are going to go away. In the past, we didn't have any regulation marks. Uh, it was way stranger. Sometimes there was a rotation, sometimes there were not. So in this video, we're gonna go uh, throughout the history of rotation itself, why they are doing it, and uh, yeah, what happened during those uh, period in time with uh, the formats. There's a lot to talk about here. So I'll try to make it as brief as possible. Otherwise, uh, we could probably lecture about this for a few hours. <laughs> That's not the point. Yeah, so, we'll, we'll see where we strand, I guess. We'll see where we're going to land up at, in that, indeed, indeed. Now, what is rotation, first and foremost? Well, as you older players may already know very well, once in a once in a while, consistent or not, they decide to rotate out older expansions, such that for the new standard format, as it's called now, but it was used to be known as the modified format, more in like with what they call it in Magic, actually, that was when you can only play X number of newest sets. Typically for around two years, roughly. That was the yeah, guiding to, stick. To make the game fresh and exciting for people altogether, because if it's always the same cards that are dominating, aka Lugia, yep. and, and <laughs> the game more, gets more stale. Importantly, yeah. And more importantly, it doesn't only get stale, it's uh, because sometimes with release of new cards, some combos become broken. Other games, they don't rotate as well, but then as a countermeasure, they have a much more, say... Um, a ban strict list. Or banning, something. ban list, exactly. Or, uh, like in Yu-Gi-Oh!, they also have restrictions, right? I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh!, but I know they restrict some cards to only one copy, two copy, and so forth. Oh, I didn't know uh, that. I, I know a little bit, I guess, but uh, I'm, I'm very, very bad at Yu-Gi-Oh!, so I just know a little bit. But uh, in, in... So, for what we have right now, so people who play Pokemon, and sometimes... A rotation can be seen as uh, either like, oh no, I'm losing my favorite deck. And for me, it's always sad. I see some cards go, but it's the same for everyone. Yeah, it happens uh, to me every season. Like, yeah, and Blacef sometimes... Blacephalon the... is, was my deck. It's gone. I it's gone. <laughs> that Regis, it's gone. It's uh, not technically gone, wah, but it's bad. No. <laughs> yeah, you have to beware. There's a big difference between saying your deck is actually gone or you have to play it in a different way. 
Knowing you, you're going to try and play Richie's again. Anyway. I, I slipped it up it. already, but uh, yeah. and at locals, I just got like slapped around. I... <laughs> yeah, but it is what it is. But remember, every time there's a rotation, just like the one we're having here in just a few days, which is actually uncommon as well, because look at the calendar. I don't know, mine says we're in, in April right now. We have a rotation shortly, which is very strange, actually. Because normally over the years, the, the consensus was always that rotation would happen after Worlds. And that's something worlds I typically... find, like, find strange because that makes Worlds actually less exciting in the past because people that watch Worlds are probably going to be playing the new season. But when all the cards then it change... Depends on how you look at it. I would say it depends on how you look at it. You can look at this. Suppose you make a rotation before Worlds, which... We had, if I remember correctly, not so even... 2019, not even the craziest yeah, rotation oh, ever. We're oh, going to be yeah. talking about that uh, in a bit. We're, but... getting, we're getting to that, but uh, we did have rotation before Worlds, and you could argue that, yes, that is very, say, skillful and new and fresh, but you can also flip it around and saying, if you're playing at the end of a given format, every deck that you will be playing or the format itself is at its pinnacle, you know, the highest point. Plus that you are all refined playing with deck the strongest list. deck of that. They're refined and everything like that. So it depends on how you look at it. And over the years, I personally preferred to play with rotation after Worlds, but I can totally see why it's very interesting, especially for the viewers yeah. and yeah, everybody at home, right? To see that the rotation happens right before. Definitely, so that people, the first that are, event... people that are not playing at Worlds will definitely watch the streams. What is good? What I need to play at my next locals? They're going to be more triggered. And that's what I found like beautiful <laughs> because I always... Uh, for it in the sense that uh, we're doing it all for the newer players. That's like yeah. always been my, my thing. And that's why I thought like the 2019 Worlds was so special. But well, let's go all the way back. Ooh, when was yeah. the first rotation? Well, the, I know we had like base sets and then we indeed, had indeed. Jungle, we had... Fossil, oh, yeah. <laughs> all those sets. And base came two. Out. And base yeah, you two. Had like, uh, you had like so base, jungle, fossil. Don't, don't uh, quote me on the order of these sets. And then base two, I believe. And the first rotation was in 01, where you rotated those four sets out, and you started with Team Rocket. Oh, yeah. Until, yeah. until I believe, you go up to Legendary Collection, I believe. But this was before my own time. Like, the oldest set that I could play when I started was EX Ruby Sapphire, which means I never, ever even played E-Card series, which is... Oh, uh, these are, they are like the most beautiful hollows in existence. They are very pretty, but there was also very important distinguish. Uh, yeah, well, say a very important thing you have to take into account here. This was the time where Wizards of the Coast still had the game, and then the last E card set was well, the last set printed under Wizards, and EX Ruby Sapphire was the first one printed under Nintendo, as we know today, or TPCI. I don't remember what the name of the company was back then, but Wizards lost the license there. And then the first set printed, well, not under Wizards, was EX Ruby Sapphire. Oh, yeah, with uh, the Hoenn region, right? I believe so, if I'm not uh, not mistaken. And I remember the first EX cards, they were quite underwhelming. That was where the first mechanic comes yeah, in. Yeah, I, actually... I remember like Hitmonchan, Chansey, Electabuzz, like weak HP, 90 HP Pokemon giving up two prize yeah. cards. Like yeah, the... but, you, but you know what was so interesting about them? They were like remakes from base set, basically, right? So it was just strong base set cards. And the funny fact is that specific uh, EX cards uh, were having like almost the same HP as their uh, regular counterpart, which was awkward. Yeah, and it's actually funny when we when we compare this to new players right now, because newer players watching this may think, you're talking about EX cards back in that day. Aren't they the same as now? And the answer is, well, no. We have uh, EX cards around a few times, right? So uh, EX cards, GX cards, V cards, level... X. Level X cards, we had all kinds of different things. Primes, we called them also. Ah, uh, primes. Those were my uh, favorite. We had so many things over the years. And common for all these, almost all at least, they've been rotated out at some point. And like I said earlier, rotation usually happened around Worlds in August, either before or after. Historically-wise, it's typically after Worlds. Because remember back in the day when we played, there was not this whole online community. You didn't stream all the games. I think the very first game that was ever really streamed by Pokemon was the finals in Worlds 07. That's at least the first one I ever saw that was recorded. I don't know if you can find a recording back, but I would love to watch that game. Because it was between um, Tom Ross and Stefan Fromm. Where Tom Ross won and uh, became world champion that year with his uh, Absolutions deck. 
Wow. And all these names had like funky names. <laughs> uh, oh, well, Steph, decks... Stephen, Stephen Fromm just returned to the game recently. So he played a couple of regionals. You may have oh, seen him. Cool, cool. But he's uh, still, he's, he's an old school player as well. Old school players all around. That, like sometimes they like uh, stop for a little bit and come back. It's, it's like the beauty of the game. They all have our moments. Yeah. Life also yeah. gets in the way, but that's the beauty about life. You never know what's coming. Hey. And uh, the truth is, where you typically we see a lot of players returning, bringing it back to rotation, is when a rotation just happens. That's where you often see people return to the game because they're like, oh, this is new, fresh now. Like we said, like this is a good moment to enter the game. And you typically see that right now. We even see in, in our own community here, I live in the Netherlands right now, but also back in Denmark, we hear about all players returning. And that always happens around rotation. And it's, it's no a, exception. It's a good thing because like, they don't need to buy all the older cards because a lot of sets get rotated out. It's fresh and that's a perfect start. Uh, actually, a perfect way to start getting back into the game. Also for newer players, that is the perfect way. So we are 2001, 2002. We are having yeah. the Team Rockets all the way to Legendary Collections. And they yeah. rotate it in... You they rotate a base set, jungle, fossil, and base two. I'm, I'm cheat cheating here a bit as well, so I can see that now. And what you may notice, very interesting back then, they actually had banned card. The Sneasel was banned at that time. Which oh, the new, new Genesis. New Gen yeah. yeah. Exactly. And that card was pretty good. But if you if you look at the if if you would look at all these different rotations and you see like, oh, they follow very much each year. So you have Rocket Legendary Collection, then the second rotation was Genesis up to Sky Ridge. And then you had Expedition to EX Hidden Legends. And then you had the first rotation where you rotate out every Wizards card. That means in 0405, you started with EX Ruby Sapphire up to Emerald. That means the Emerald was the last set released in that season before you had the next rotation. Yeah, and if we look and at them all together, uh, I, like the Team Rocket to Legendary mm -hmm. Collection was the one that actually was, it happened on the 1st of September 2001. Yeah. Let's check out the and, Neo and, Genesis. And um, you see, you see the you see the names here and everything like that. So you see that was in first of September. So your worlds would have happened already. That typically happened in mid end August. And if you go forward again, they announce it say in June, July, and then the implementation comes at end August. You see with a second uh, rotation here, where from O two to O three, where they rotated out the uh, rocket all the way up until Gym Challenge. So the newest set was uh, or the oldest set you could play was Genesis. That went into effect on August thirty first. So that was, uh, sorry, August 3rd. Yeah, My exactly. Bad. So, so that was action. before World. So they, they still have no idea, like, do we do it for World oh, afterwards? Wait a, they, wait a, wait a second. I would, I would like to say I'm actually not sure when Worlds took place at that time. And at what? that time, I don't I don't think, I don't think was it was Worlds. Worlds. I know, exactly. It was yeah. different back then. Worlds, as we know, it didn't start before, well... After 04. Well, 04, I Our think, Pokemon was the first took one. took over the game, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Before then, it was called... There was a tropical mega battle they had it. They had these different gym challenges. Yeah, they had all yeah, kinds yeah. of super trainer showdowns. That was the name I was looking for. So uh, these these old names and everything, uh, it's uh, interesting names and different things. And when you look at these things here, you see the word modified format happen a lot. And only standard was only, well, that's a newer expression we adopted uh, over the year, in the later years. Yeah, it's, it's funny to see like the, the seasons uh, took like exactly almost one year and they typically uh -huh. like say, oh, we're rotating uh, somewhere in August, somewhere in September, right? And you notice here that it, it corresponds to around three to four sets because the, the aim was typically to have a set released every three months, roughly. Some years was not the same. You sometimes uh, later now, especially you have a lot of mini sets in between. But main sets, you had three to four every year, which means when you rotated, you rotate out also three to four. That's not, that was not the standard always. Well, it was the standard, but there were some exceptions to this. Some years we didn't have rotation, which was strange times. And for people who play the game a little bit, they also know about mid-season rotation that happens Emergency sometimes. Emergency rotations. Yeah, they had to hit the big red button and do something because the format was kind of broken at that moment. Because but I guess we get to get that. <laughs> and it seems to be doing it a lot with Sableye, right? Why is Sableye broken all the time? <laughs> well, uh, the whole point back then was to, you know, if you went first, which Sableye kind of made you do, it was pretty bad. And um, that was one thing, but there was also another time I believe this was done uh, because we had a rotation somewhat early uh, around the time of Nationals. Now, I cannot remember exactly which year, but we're talking about Toad, Seismic Toad uh, oh, uh, yeah. at this point. I because like. you had, exactly, you had, you had nationals before this rotation and nationals after this rotation. Oof. 
and I played nationals before the rotation, which means you played toad or you mm, you didn't win. Now that was the you uh, your chance of winning was very low. It was Rebecca just all toad. Toad. Hypnotoxic laser. You get the D drill and plug. DCE and you cannot play the game and I win. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, that that sounds uh, just just about it, indeed. Okay, we're, we're looking right now. Uh, currently, I'm at 2003 to 2004. Where yeah, you're looking at Expedition to Hidden Legends, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was October 1st. So these formats yeah. are like all over the place. Sometimes they rotate uh, in August. You sometimes... know, you notice one thing here, right? You notice that it also goes always over the summer, beginning autumn, because they're early in the season. Because Pokemon always had their season starting. Well, always now. It's difficult. It's dangerous to say always. Most but time. always, always starting around with the new school year, for instance. That's typically what you saw when you see September 1st, or you see uh, August, or you see October. It's all around the same quarter of the year. And no exception here. Yeah, it makes sense. So uh, these are like the, the first three formats, uh, which you didn't play it. And then all no. the way back, here comes EX, Ruby, and Sapphire. You get your first deck built. What was the first deck you played in that format? So they actually were from <laughs> September 2004 yep. to August 2005. And I think that's the first time there was a World Championships by the Pokemon champ or by Pokemon itself. Right? I think I think it's just been there at this moment. Like it was just there at this moment. I think it was before. Uh, so this would be into the second World Championship. Um, so the first one has just taken, pl taken place when this uh, rotation started. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There was a 2004 World Championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. That, that was that was the whole uh, that was the whole thing about playing. I believe there was EX uh, Magma Aqua deck. That was that really cool deck. Yeah, with Groudon. Gr Groudon. I also see that uh, Delcati was a thing, and and something like uh, the Dunce part yeah. was pretty good. Dunce was really good, and this is really funny you mentioned this because that card was so good back then, and then it was reprinted later, and it was just not used. And the reason for that really is fun. that uh, turn one attacks that could not happen, right? Yeah, that was one reason. I think it's the main reason, of course, but also the reason the decks in general was just faster. Back then, this was way more setup oriented. Yeah. So you, I, you were those formats many turns are, setting up. Those formats were way more fun if I take a look at it because there's a lot of stage twos, there's stage ones. There was mm -hmm. a Pidget, which was pretty broken, which could get anything. Yeah. And and the thing was is that it's not like turn one, Meloetta, boom, boosh, you, you lose the game. Like, uh, <laughs> you, asked, you asked me what my first deck was, right? It's funny you mentioned Pidget. The first deck I played was Nationals uh, 2005. And there I played uh, Gardevoir, Pidget, Gorbus. So, and... And not only just one Gardevoir, you play, I played two Gardevoir. So you played a regular Gardevoir that had Psy Shadow. It could search your deck for a Psychic Energy and attach, and you would take 20 damage on the Pokemon you attach the energy mm, to. Sounds familiar. That part was yeah, it's familiar because it was later reprinted as well. I don't remember which set, but it's been in a newer format. Right now it's still old, old, but it still was there. And then you would play it with a Gardevoir EX, which was, uh, back then it was very common that stage 2 EXs had around 150 hit points and two weaknesses. Two, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. And typically, this one had, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was grass and dark, I believe. It was really strange. But the idea was with this card, it could do... Um, for two energies, it could do put 10 damage counters for each card in your opponent's hand. So that was pretty cool. And for four energies, it did 10 for each energy in play total on both fields, on both sides of the field. It was a very strong card. And Gorbus literally said uh, 20 plus 10 for each Psychic in play. So you could just get a lot of Psychic energy in play and, you know, just count. I believe That's it was like that. Damage. And Pitchet was Pitchet. You could search for anything. And most importantly, you didn't have to wait a turn when you had to play Rare Candy. You can literally just play Pitchy, Rare Candy, Pitchet, and you had it straight away. Oh, that for, yeah. And that's when Stage 2s were good. So that we see, you, you see a time. trend here, right? They you see to, the trend. Like, if they give that, like, Errata, where you can evolve instantly with Rare Candy, the format would be a little bit... I think Gardevoir EX would be broken, I know, uh, in this current I age. Think, I, think the, I think this format would be dangerous. Like, I think one of the reasons why they're holding on this one here, I don't know if it's even been up for discussion. I'm just thinking, okay, suppose we could play Rare Candy like in the old days. It would be, uh, let's put it like this, interesting. Because it, I still think it actually will, will benefit basics, and why am I saying this? Some basics benefit from having a strong stage 2 next to it. And by having an instant rare candy ruling, you can just, you know, buff your basics still with use of some stage 2s. There's some really cool combos you can make. Yeah, I wonder if it would be broken or not, because there's a lot of things you can 
like how many stage twos are actually viable right now? Oh, uh, don't ask me. We're too new in the format, but everybody is sitting on Gardevoir for one of them right now. But there's many others right now that could be actually potentially, yeah, potentially super good. So we just have to see. We have EYC coming up next week at the moment know, of this recording, of course. I, I still have a lot of training to do. So uh, there's currently the Easter weekend. So uh, I'm, I, t I'll... I told you just just uh, just rewrap your Giga stake and get going. It right? is sleep. <laughs> it is still up on the table. But the problem I see like when I'm playing Regis is that uh, I, I miss ordinary rods. So you always need to like play Mariam to get a Pokemon back. And sometimes mm -hmm. you don't draw into it immediately. So you see, I, and that and they they boss up the the Regi that is currently in your discard pile. And uh, when yeah. that happens, you need Miriam on the spot. And when you use Miriam, you need to correct Reggie. And that it's a, I, I see the difficulties. And uh, it's not like what, research ordinary rod. Ha <laughs> Here we are. There's a fun point actually now when you're saying this here because right now you're experiencing what a lot of players in the past also experienced right around the rotation, right? When you just have a fresh rotation, this is that you can also view at the weakest point of a given format in the sense that everybody feels that everything is more inconsistent, which is natural. You just Correct. lost a lot of good cards. So technically, but, if you go into a, a brand new format, yeah. you play the most consistent thing and you should have an edge over the clunky decks that... Uh... I would guess. But the format I would like, I always want to think back at. If you move, if you look at your format list here and you go back to the format that would be... Uh, what would be that format? It would be the 0708, I believe. If you would look at that format, so... Hold you... on Phantoms, Majestic Dawn? Exactly, because, yeah, Hold on Phantom, Majestic Dawn. So if you look at the rotated expansions, they actually rotated five full sets there. Deoxys, Emerald, Unseen Forces, Delta Species, and EX Legend Maker. Very, five. very good sets. Um, honestly, don't ask me why, what they did, but what you noticed when you started the season, look at the sets that you could play. You could play Phantom, Crystal Guardians... Dragon Frontier, Power Keepers, and when you just started the season, you could only play Diamond and Pearl, and then Mysterious Treasures came in. That's because... not a lot of sets. That's like six sets. No, it was the very one of the slimmest formats I remember. So at that time, you could play Blissey, or you could just not win the tournament. It was kind of how it felt. You would play Blissey because that was released in uh, Mysterious Treasures. Your deck list was basically four chances for Blissey, 20-something energies, and a lot of cards to get Blissey going. Nah. But what you notice here, uh, also a very interesting thing, we always we talked about expanded before or after worlds, but what about a set drop before or after worlds? Now what happened this year was Diamond and Pearl dropped right before worlds. That means the first event with the new Diamond and Pearl set, which was a complete new era, was at worlds. Was at worlds, and it was also my very first worlds. Uh, fun fact. How did and you do? Played, I, my best result to date, I got uh, 12. Oh, wow, cool. And uh, it was also the smallest worlds, and I think still one of the hardest worlds to qualify for, because if I remember correctly, we were 64 players total. And the only way you could qualify was winning your national championship, at least in Europe. Oh, Maybe wow, yeah. a top two somewhere, but... Or you can get top four on the ranking list, which was done by ELO ranking. ELO, and uh, wow. I, ELO ranking, yeah. And I got through on the ranking because I got top four in my own nationals and then I uh, got the last spot on the ranking list. And then uh, went to Hawaii to... Yeah, because it was, went on, it was on Hawaii, that Worlds. The first uh, Hawaii Worlds that we had for a while. We had an 07, 10, and 12 that were all on Hawaii. Ah, uh, then tw the two, 2012, I remember. Yeah, and, and Diamond and Pearl was very interesting because a lot of new mechanics came in because Plus Power was released at that moment, and the weakness was changed also, I believe. It went from... Plus basic 30. Has, yeah, no, plus 10, plus 20, plus 30. Actually. Yeah, it depends on the stage, like basic, stage 1, stage 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember a little then, bit about these things. And then, and then they would put in like these... Uh, was that level X time? I don't even remember. But in any case, the, the, the special cards that time would then get double weakness. That was, that was, that was the whole gimmick. So it was, uh, it was very, really an interesting format to go into because uh, I remember we were walking into Worlds with this rotation just looming right after, but Diamond and Pearl just dropping. Lucario was very interesting because you could play Riulu that had an attack, flip, hits, 30, and everybody was using Holland's cast form. So people, they actually would just make decks on Riulu because you could attack in your first turn, so you could dunk your opponent before ah, they got a turn. Dunking, that should and, also be like a topic we should talk about. Like... Like, we should really uh, talk about dunking. That's yeah, one of the reasons for an emergency rotation later, right? Yeah, exactly. Because like uh, dunking, because in some certain formats, 
like there are also rule change. Like for instance, now there's a rotation the 14th of April and the thing, the new gimmick is that item cards specific, like tool cards become their own classification. That's a new like a gimmick going with every rotation. Ooh, that's yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is like with specific rotations, sometimes you could attack first. Sometimes yeah. you cannot attack first. Sometimes you can play a supporter mm. first. Sometimes you cannot yeah. play a supporter first. Like they change it up a little bit between uh, specific formats. And, and if we take a look at like right now, we are at 2007, 2008. I just want to get like 2005, 2006 and 2006, yeah. 2007 Fine. on its way. Uh, because we, yeah. we see that it's not always the same. We see September and August being the main ways they, they rotate. Sometimes they rotate uh, four sets. Sometimes like uh, we see here with the uh, Majestic Dawn situation they rotated yeah. five sets so they are not consistent throughout the entire lifespan of rotation no and what you often would see here when you if, if anybody would take a look at all these here you would talk about blocks so typically when pokemon released these kind of things it came in uh, what we call blocks so right now we start a block with scarlet and violet that's what we can see as a new block our previous block was the sword and shield block as you can think of and then before that we had well what was it the sun and moon block uh correct correct me if i'm I, wrong i think the last one yeah yeah so right now we start the scala vile block then before that we had the sword and shield block then you have a sun and moon block you had x and y block and then black and white block and then back in the then you're back in hard gold soul silver block you have these big blocks and typically a rotation will always happen to cut off one of these blocks or in the middle of a block yeah because typically one block would be around two years give or take and when they were not two years, that's where you get strange rotations sometimes. And that's what you see, for instance. Like, I'll give you a very good example around the time you want to look at. You see now that uh, that uh, I told you in 06, 07, Diamond and Pearl was just introduced. That's the newest set there. And right before, you had Ruby Sapphire, Emerald, EX, uh, Hidden Legends up to Holland Phantom. Ruby Sapphire was the start of a new block, right? A block that ended with Diamond and Pearl. I would say, typically, I would say, right? So they had, you had two years going on there with a lot of sets in between. And then Diamond and Pearl was the newest thing, which means that consensus would tell you that Diamond and Pearl at some point would be the oldest set you could play in a given format. And believe it or not, it actually happened, right? If you move up to o, o, the o, t, o 08 format, then Diamond and Pearl became the oldest set. And you see this over and over again, that the first set printed in the block will, as a... Uh, logic would dictate at some point be the oldest set you could play and that's uh, that's what you we think is very interesting and that may or may not change now because as you mentioned at the beginning of the video uh, joshua we had um, regulation marks now something we didn't have before makes it way the easier for uh, newer players to see if can i play this card like right now in the past we yeah. had like all set symbols <laughs> but <laughs> only yeah. the the real ogs know every set symbol on the, the top of their head so like for new players that i always like i always get this question can i play this card in standard like now it's way easier does does the card it state is. e f or g no or the, the only or question you get right now you only get one question right now is that is this card reprinted like these kind of things that may yeah. happen can i use this old uh like in the past it was like these old quick balls from i think it was also a diamond and pearl set if i'm not mistaken yeah like, can i, I use remember these? I, uh, and they are having a diff they have the same name but they have different <laughs> text but they can still be used so that trader card also uh, something we should note down that could also oh, be we, a cool video. we even had that with energies because uh, i remember i played dutch double callers energies when they were legal double callers oh yeah and, yeah and 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 i was almost getting into trouble a lot with this because dutch was not an official language at the time because dutch was only printed in base fossil jungle oh so, yeah so i had base set double callers energies in dutch i would play uh double clear lows, i believe they're called yeah 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 um, Double clearlos, so if I pronounce this correctly, my best Dutch. But the point was, then sometimes I would actually get into trouble almost for this year because I was playing technically illegal cards. So, yeah. uh, so that was very interesting to move into. But okay, besides the point of the rotation, but still interesting with reprint re re cards. Yeah, so uh, right now, 2008, 2010, yeah. we see that it's yeah. not uh, um, a standard format of a year or modified format, it's two years. Oh. Indeed, this was the, I remember this time, everybody was expecting a rotation, right? But remember what I just mentioned here before, the beginning of the 08 season was the smallest format we've seen in a long time. With like six, I mentioned, six the sets, sets you could, legal. 
Exactly, which is considerably small. And remember, you may think as a newer player, six sets is quite a lot because each set has 200 something cards, right? That was not the case back then. A set may have between 100, 150 cards. I remember Holland Phantom being a set with, I think, just around 100 cards. That was it. Yeah, I rem also remember, stuff. like, when I started playing during Her Gold, Soul, Silver, Black and White, I think Black and White base set had, like, almost 100 cards. And two... Actually, I sh actually, I should know this. It has 115 cards. Yeah, uh... something like it. And the, the thing was also, there were two chase cards, two full arts. Yeah. Asherim and Zekrom. And there was a secret yeah. rare Meowth, if I'm not... Or Pikachu. That, oh, there was a Pikachu. Yeah. Uh, why do I know this? It's because I'm for my um, for my own research right now. I got to look at all card prices, starting from black and white, and there I have to know every, how many cards are in each set. Yeah. So indeed, that's why I think a good guess was 115 cards in black. Yeah, and white. something 100. No and, then, and the thing is, is like, how can you imagine a set right now in this uh, time and age coming out 100 cards, only two chase cards, like mm -hmm. the the collectors are like say. Ugh, is this even a challenge? Like, easy. Yeah, like, but this nah. was different times. This was different times, my friend, because the point was back then, like what you're going to see right now, there's many arguments why you should have, why they want bigger sets and everything. Of course, it's about Leo, how much should you buy, right? But the point here, what you're going to point at here, you see here in 08 to 010 was the first time, because there was such a small form in the beginning, everybody still expected a rotation, but then they announced no rotation. We just kept going for another year. And then you went all the way up on playing Diamond and Pearl, all the way up until Unleashed, and, which and, was... And uh, did they actually uh, announce everything? Like, to uh, this year there will be no rotation, or did they, like, go silent mode? No, they announced it. This wow. was announced. Uh, uh, I don't remember exactly when they announced it, but it was very interesting that they would just, you know, uh, uh, say, hey, guys, uh, this is uh, announced. And that was very, very... Uh, okay, I looked it up. It was actually announced in June 8th, 09, that we will continue. So June already was... That's around a regular time to get an announcement about rotation, assuming yeah. it will happen in August, September. So when we announced that it was no rotation, I, it was really, really... For the um, first time, the community yeah. went crazy, right? Like, wow. Yeah, it was, it was really crazy because then you could play all the way from Diamond Pearl and then you had like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 12, 13, 14 sets at the end, plus trainer kits and whatever and pop sets. It was, it was crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So when the, the rotation finally happened, some would say, they rotated Majestic Dawn to black and white. And then you would see from Majestic Dawn, you only rotate out four sets still. You rotated Diamond and Pearl, Mysterious Treasures, Secret Runners, and Great Encounters. Oh, wow. You still had like big sets. Oh, that, yeah, uh, yeah, big uh, formats, right? And big formats. This was the first rotation where I remember people, this was where social media started really coming in, right? And forums and, people, uh, and stuff like uh, forums, Poke, Poke Gym. Gym. Yeah, yeah. You can before print that, out, it was Pocho. You can, before that, it was Pocho. Uh, you can print <laughs> out your, your deck list, but you have to write everything on. That's so old school. Wow. Yeah, but uh, sometimes, hey, that may happen now with locals returning, right? Some You have to hand in a deck list still, right? And some will still only take paper lists. So get printed. Yeah, people were saying like, oh, I'm going to use TCG Live export and then boom, TCG Live explodes and <laughs> yeah, then you, I'm not even going to talk about TCG Live in this video. Yeah, All I can say is I'm probably one of the few. I haven't even opened it yet. Uh, <laughs> you are a busy fella, so... <laughs> Uh, there, there's enough to do, but uh, one thing I want to say about this rotation, so they say Diamond and Pearl up to Great Encounters, that's the first time I saw people really, you know, being very sad, uh, because you also made that the social media post. This is where Claydol rotated. I don't know if you're familiar with Claydol. Uh, well, let me think. Uh... Claydol was... Uh, put two cards in, like... discard two, and then draw a lot of cards, or, or put two cards on almost. the bottom and draw... Almost, yeah, almost. It draws cards. Exactly. So the thing was, it was a stage one, of course, of all the belts. Or as everybody knows, it'll say, put up to two cards on the bottom of your deck and draw to six. I was so close. Yeah, we were close. And the card was mad good. It was really good. Yeah, draw, drawing to six it, is like... Drawing cards draw to six is solid. And you wouldn't deck out also, technically. Mm, you draw, because you always put cards back in the deck. Yeah, it depends. If you all, uh, keep drawing two, then you're you're equal. Yeah, oh. But often you often you construct scenarios that of course you would never you know deck out or these kind of things. Yeah, you could draw, put one back, draw one, then yeah. Yeah. you could do a lot of cool things back then. 
Now, I don't remember if it was you had to put two under or it was up to two, but in any case, you at least had to put one if possible. And that was really, really interesting back then. And uh, this was a very big rotation. And then you notice that it went up onto black and white, right? Ah, and this then, is where I came into the scene. I can talk a bit. <laughs> indeed. Now you now you also know a lot of stuff. And then you see the rotation happening afterwards, starting with Hard Gold Soul Silver, which was very expected at the moment because Hard Gold Soul Silver was the base set of that block. So no surprise that you see Black and White was introduced at the end of the 1011 rotation. And then you see you skip two sets forward or two rotations forward and you see Black and White being the newest set or the oldest set you could use in this rotation, which was obvious because black and white again at that point was the first set of a block. Like, I would also like to make the prediction that Scarlet and Violet that just releases now for play will at some point in the future be the oldest set you can play, although differently because of the regulation marks, but it will still coincide roughly with Scarlet and Violet. I would yeah. The, the, the strange thing is that like they now rotate in April. There's also a very mm -hmm. strange specific time yeah. to start rotation. What does that mean? Will they rotate next year in uh, August? Or will they yeah. keep doing it in April? Because now we have like the a really big format where like Intellion is in the format together oh, or maybe yeah. better use like powerful cars energy is in the same format like Lugia that was not supposed to be no, that may, way. Maybe not so. supposed to be that way, but one thing you notice, there's a difference when you have a rotation like this in April. There's a difference between it being an early rotation or a late rotation. And this one is a late rotation because the rotation was postponed from last year. So we expected a rotation last year in, say, August or something like that. But then they postponed it and announced that there's not going to be a rotation before, well, the next year. And that's and also the because there were no locals and stuff. We had, we mm -hmm. came from a pandemic and they said, like, we're not rotating. There was, I don't know what the specific reason was for, like, let's say, like, let's keep Intellion and all these busted power, uh, special energy still in the format. Is it because they, they wanted Reggie Gigas to be on, on stream for a bit? <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe, maybe they, maybe they said, you know what, this Gigas card is good. And uh, this Zapdos guy, we, we, he needs <laughs> to play something that can get him on stream, right? So <laughs> we need to keep Gigas in the format, right? <laughs> That's exactly the reason. <laughs> yeah, we, we, they, they're never going to tell us, but we can only guess, right? Yeah. But so, rotations were always such a cool thing because it, it's what keeps the game, say, alive and keeps it, like, um, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, super new. exciting. Keeps super fresh. exciting. Like, like and, for content creators, is, is like the pinnacle of making videos, right? Because people want to see how does this deck uh, look like post rotation? Uh, what is the tier list post rotation? Which, which decks are going to get rotated? Which cards are now gone? What are the best cards to, like, <laughs> they 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 really want to know everything because they want to prepare themselves as best as they can because rotation pretty much comes paired with uh, a new season for championship points right rotation exactly. and, oh boom there's a new uh way to of course get your invite and stuff but now with mid-season rotations people already have their invite or have had their invite or are nowhere yeah, near close but this is a very <laughs> it's a very strange time because what did they announce at the same time remember the returns of local so there is something new happening like you could say like that so you uh, just a few days ago a few days not too long ago they announced of course returns of local starting here well after UIC, uh, which means that uh, people now can play back in their challenges, they can play their cups, and they have ah, a best finishing of two each, that's right? That's going to be so fantastic. I, th the best thing I love <laughs> about the trading card game, and why I have been doing it for like almost 12 years, is that showing up at locals, people mm -hmm. for the first time, like, oh, this is great, this is great. And the people that buy their first binder, and I give out like staples. That's like the best thing ever. Like here, here you go. There's a couple of nest balls. That's yeah, like, and it's it's always so cool. And the, to the do smile that. on their face, like they're making their first deck, and oh, you think this is good? And they, oh, oh, it's fantastic. Locals. Ah, uh, it, it's wonderful times. These things. I also wish we can get locals back in my town as well. We're still waiting for that, so uh, fingers crossed it'll happen soon. Uh, yeah, and also locals are less serious. And I just remember oh, when I sure, started yeah. playing, as I only went to locals. Like the funny fact is I got like, I, I just played locals, but not a lot of them. I played like a challenge, I played a cup. But the fun fact that was in 2012, since we're in that era right now, the thing that was there is nationals. Like uh, also cool, could be a cool topic video because of the fact that like now we have internationals. Are that the same as nationals? No, because nationals were for every specific country and the top two players the rule, get the their rule invite. Was, 
the rule was very different back then, uh, Joshua. Now I can tell a little bit about it if I may go slightly off topic. Uh, we always go off, really, off road. That's yeah, not, I've been, I've been off topic. I've been off topic since the start of this video anyway, right? So uh, uh, why the hell no, the, point, the, point, the point about nationals was uh, I believe the last nationals we held as we know them was in 2016 because I organized nationals in Denmark for many years. Uh, since maybe 9 or 10, all the way up on 16, I was organizing nationals together with my dad and mom. It was a family thing, I guess. Um, but the point was, 16 ended it, and typically the winner will get an invitation, sometimes paid, sometimes not. It depends on the country, because uh, some countries with different rank, different group, like England, Germany, the bigger nations, they would have top two. Smaller nations like Belgium or Denmark, they will get the winner. And typically they, they will get a pay trip and then maybe top two, two top four, perhaps will get an invitation to play. Yeah, I think that it was, was a top two because in, in that year, 2012, yeah. I, I got second uh, at nationals and uh, I got my invite, but it was not a pay trip. And me being 17 and, uh, years old, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't have money to fly all the way to Hawaii. Yeah. I, I, I remember I, that. Yeah, that, that, that's why I had to skip worlds during. 20 I was years. I was I was seventeen the first time I, I won a paid trip back in the 07 format, like I said earlier, and th that's where I won the first trip to Hawaii. And I was seventeen, which means they also pay for a guardian. So I brought my grandma. So it was me and my grandma. We flew to Hawaii. Oh, was, uh, fantastic times, memories. Cool, cool gift, cool gift. I I came to her three days before departure and flew a ticket, a paper ticket that been, and I said, uh, "Here's a ticket for Hawaii. We're going in three days." <laughs> And then uh, she got all shocked, like, oh, how am I supposed to pack? How am I going to do this? And then uh, my grandpa, he rolled in with a suitcase and said, I already done that because I told him the day before, two days before. Oh, that's and, then, fantastic. and then she was like, you're in on this? Yeah, of course, it's a vacation for me too. You're leaving for a week. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> but there was one note about nationals I want to say. Like, you can say you had to be of that nationality to play. Yeah, correct. Or you had to have residency in that country, then you could choose where to play. Or if you have two passports, you could be playing two different nationals. Yeah. No, you could not. No? You could choose one. You could only choose one. one. Oh. You could only play one. So I had a choice, for instance. I have a Danish nationality, Danish passport, but I was living in the Netherlands at that time already, since uh, 10. So I could choose in 10 already, 10, 11, I believe it was. I could choose to uh, play Dutch nationals or Danish nationals. Danish so nationals. I... <laughs> the no, Dutch people uh, are very. No, no surprise. I played the Dutch nationals because I was organizing the Danish one. Oh, <laughs> so... okay. So that's what it was. But right now, so... the current agent time, Dutch people are really crazy good at the game. They're good. They're good. Well, uh, they're very good. No, no doubt about that. I think uh, now, now I'm probably going to stump some to hurt some people here and saying. But I was very happy with the SP returning to Netherlands because I think the, the country is so strong. It's probably per ra player ratio among the strongest countries in the world, I would say. The, and this, uh, this are based simply on results. Have you seen the Dutch play players out of the events? Dangerous good. And they every always, cup they, you have here they, is stamped stacked. They always stacked. slap me around. Like, <laughs> I remember uh, you playing... St you still do well, my friend. You still do well. Yeah, top 16. Uh, the Dutch people always stop me in my tracks. That's what it is. <laughs> but um, but I've, been, I've been top cutting Dutch nationals three times. Uh, oh, man. I got, I got top 16 once. That was a big year. And I lost top 16. I've been in, in top 8 or top 4. I've been in top 8 at least. I don't know if I had a second top 8 or was top 4. But I was top cutting again there. I remember those uh, days as well. But yeah, you could choose. Uh, you had the choice. And a lot of players, it was very interesting what people would choose. And my choice was always clear. Uh, I always made sure that Dutch nationals was not organized the same weekend as Danish or the other way around, right? right? So I could... Uh, the first week we I played in the Netherlands, so we went down and played in Leiden, I believe it was. Um, and then I would uh, travel back to Denmark and organize Danish nationals for the weekend after. That was just uh, how everything went. Oh, the perfect but, month. Uh, but uh, back to rotations. <laughs> So, yeah, the, the reason why I'm saying this, we were talking about locals and they are returning and that is always linked to uh, like a specific thing. Like when they have rotation, something happens on that day. Like uh, most of the time, it's going to be a, the start of a new season. And uh, here, this time and age, 2023, it's the start of locals. And that's why we got off track because locals are so a fantastic time, such a fantastic yeah. time for like newer players. And like back in the days, 2012, here we are, heard Gozel Silver all the way to Darkness Explorers, where Darkrai wow. EX was like literally everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. But the locals that at that point is what you had to do. You had one nationals in a year and then a bunch of locals. But there was also cities yeah. uh, that gave up, like, was that with Ch I don't even remember yeah. if that was. No. Champion. 
Championship sure points or not? Championship points was not yet at that moment because I believe the new structure as we knew, the first Worlds you could get invited for with the new point structure was Worlds 2015 in Boston. That was the first world where we had the day one, day two invitation system. Yeah, and that was yeah. also where I think, somebody will probably correct me on this, but that was the first season where we really had championship points as we knew. Before then, it was ELO ranking. Yeah, so that's what I figured, right? Because I played it 2012 and I don't even remember. I, if you check out, check out old videos, I, I got championship points. No, that was not the case. I got like a trophy of cities. So I was like, yeah, hey. Yeah, but your ELO changed, right? And depending on the event, you had battle roads, I believe it was back then. Battle roads, mm-hmm. cities, and, city. and, 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 and... And then you had like a regional state. Regional still existed. And then the ELO base was just higher. And they were K, whatever you called them, K32, K, K16, K, mention a number. There was just a base value for ELO. So, which means, of course, when you played Nationals, a game won there will count a lot more than a game you won at your local cities. Hmm. Just for example. That was the, the, the way they did it back then. But, of course, uh, ELO is flawed in many ways. It works very well for many other games. For Pokemon, you, had to, you saw often the people at Nationals. Uh, we had players, they would go to Nationals. They would go 1-0, 2-0, and then drop to protect their ELO. <sighs> at national think about it they will go to nationals go 1-0 and then drop which was honestly it was the most logical move for them because they will they will have enough high elo rank to go to worlds but they will you know pass out on potentially winning their nationals but then you are playing it safe you would know okay i go and go 1-0 my elo is good enough drop that's crazy that i have never heard that before Oh, that is a thing. That is a thing. And I uh, I believe for people listening out there, they may already think about a few people who did that back then. And it was a thing. And, like, yeah, uh, are, are, do we have ELOs right now? Because I sometimes I, I get the feeling that like, uh, during uh, round one, I always get paired to like some sort of no player. So, <laughs> nah, that's just uh, so the way the system is, of course, when, uh, when you look at now we use Tom again, which they also used for many of the times. Uh, so when you use Tom, it's random pairings in the first round. It random. is random, Joshua. But there is, with that like said, it. there is an ELO behind it. Yeah, but it, you cannot, uh, it's because you would feel, ELO would matter if they update and download the ELO and championship points before the event. But Pokemon, as far as I'm concerned, I know, they don't use seeding. That's another cool topic we can talk about, by the way, uh, because I have, have a lot of opinions list. about that too. But um, from what I know, no, they don't do that, which means it's completely random. But in the back, we do have ELO. And sometimes you go in and look at your Pokemon.com account, you can see ELO in the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you do have an elo but championship points what matters of course yeah that's what i thought yeah so back to rotation hmm. <laughs> so here we are oh uh, was that the topic of this video again i forgot about it huh? oh no <laughs> maybe i should give it a different title like talking about rotation and talking about yeah. the history of the pokemon tcg <laughs> you, you should just top it you should just maybe topic it like we were supposed to talk about rotation however <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's a cool maybe i should do that so yeah, so where, where are we <laughs> where are we now so uh yeah dark explorers that was the set that was yeah. legal for worlds 2012 and we all know what happened there right oh, it was a dark cry madness dark cry dark- came out Terrakian. and if, if, dark if, if, cry was the stuff w- yeah what's terrakion i know <laughs> Or, or uh, oh, which cards were there? Oh yeah, Next Destinies was came out in May, and I played that nationals. Oh, it was the ECC European mm-hmm. Challenge Cup that we yep, go and way that took place back. in the Netherlands. Netherlands. The, yeah, Netherlands. the Netherlands, yes. Exactly. So, and uh, the fun fact is that Mewtwo was one of the very a few cards that costs a bazillion amount of dollars for that time it was very expensive that time getting a mewtwo ex opening in a pack was like golden you could uh, i don't know how expensive it was but it was very I, expensive it was 45 dollars for the regular mewtwo ex i think like right yeah. now oh 45 that's nothing but during those not days back, not, it was like, insane yeah. we didn't have inflation it was the price was a lot for that card and i remember i inflation, didn't have inflation. a mewtwo ex i didn't have yeah. one I went to registrate for ECC and just bought a blister. Blisters are fantastic, old school products, love them. So I opened uh, the blister, get three packs, get that cool looking promo card, and yeah. bam, out of nowhere, Mewtwo EX. I was like instantly, because there were no like uh, deck lists that you had to hand in through RK9 Labs or online or anything, instantly scratched one energy from my deck and put a Mewtwo EX in my Magnezone deck, and boom, let's work, let's go for it. 
And it got way better, right? Because Mewtwo was super good. So yeah, you can just add Mewtwo and use uh, X Ball. Boom. Yeah, and that's what <laughs> it was. I got like top sixteen. I think also in that top sixteen there was also like Tord Reckliff. Uh, I have to check this out. I, I really like. Uh, I, there's like you a got, website. You for gotta that. go back on it. Yeah, um, yeah. There's uh, the the TGG archives. I believe the archives have all guys. these kind of cool things. Okay. I think ECC 2012. A good moment for yes, shout out yes, for all those yes. cool pages out there. Yeah, like, definitely. We have so many shout cool out. resources. PTG, so cool. PCG arch, uh, PTCG ar archive.com. That's what it is. I'm, I'm here like 2012 European Challenge Cup. So now, look you're gonna at, go and link. You're gonna go and link that below this video when we're done with this video, definitely. right? Because so, this is a super cool website. So look at this Masters, uh, the top 16. Yeah. Which names do we see? Tord Reckliff. Yeah, huh. I know this guy. He's pretty good. I heard. Pablo Meza. Ah, Mexico. Yes. Robin Schultz. I've heard about him too. Alessandro oh. Crimascoli. Oh, that guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, hi, Alessandro. Hey, hey. And myself. So this top 16, and all these players are still playing mm -hmm. so many years later. I wanted to count, but math didn't work out here. So 11 years later, there's still all these top players. And that's like, that was such a stacked top 16. And oh, I need to, I need, I, I want to go and look at the whole top I, 16 yeah, now, yeah, because now yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll link it down below. So uh, here perfect, we are. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, you should, you should definitely check it out. It is such an incredible website. So what do we see here is that oh, all these familiar faces. And, and, and during that time, I knew nobody. Oh. I know. I knew. Uh, nobody. we know. I know Benjamin Stee and Tom Hall. We know them all. Mace is there too. Yeah, Tom Mace Hall is like uh, he owns a shop right now, right? He's eight. That's the eight bit planet guy. Yeah, nice guy. yes, yes, yes. A very nice guy. And so, uh, and Ace, Asa played back then. I remember Asa and Finn Loft as well. I know a lot of these players as well. Oh wait, I go down. <laughs> you want to hear a fun fact? If you go scroll down to number twenty one. Maybe they need to update that. That's my brother, Simon Eriksson from Chandler. <laughs> but if you notice the flag, they gave him a Norwegian flag. <laughs> <laughs> I oh. think that's actually funny. I oh, yeah. All the, all, more players I know. Steven Mao. Oh, man. He still plays. Gavain is around. Simon Soldo. There's so oh, many nice wow, players around here. So, so, uh, let's check out the seniors. Are there any people that like have now like went all the way to uh, Gabor? I know Gabor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is uh, some really cool things, yeah, back then as well. You can also oh. go down. And, oh, look at the juniors. Look at juniors and who's fifth down there. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so fantastic. This website, there's also going to be a topic on this website. Look at your ah. results here. It's so fantastic. So look at... Uh, at what, what was the topic of this video again? <laughs> uh, just uh, we were supposed to talk about rotation. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Cool. What, yeah. what is rotation again? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we had the Dark Explorer set coming out just before Worlds. And Next Destinies was uh, also before that. I think it was in February, Next Destinies. And the funny fact, my pre-release video of uh, her, uh, Next Destinies has over 200,000 views. You see how, just, uh, see how impactful Mewtwo EX was or big capital yeah. EX cards. No, I'm just, I'm just sorry. I'm just sitting and laughing with it because I think this is the third time you say this Dark Explorers thing and stuff like that because we always keep going on top, <laughs> off topic. Why the hell and not, the, right? And literally the first second after, the first sentence after that, you go off topic again. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I, so... I, uh, I'm no better, so it, it's, it's just fun this anyway. This this no, is going to be a fun video. I'll spread it around. People will love it. It's like the history of the TCG. Ah, they they, they just have fun. Yeah, we're just gonna a, have fun, you know. But look at these, look at the, look at these cool rotations. We have so many cool rotations still yet left to discuss. Yeah, we to I think we're I think we're halfway, halfway. Yeah, and well, how no. much time we spend on this? We we need to make a part two. Trust me. Then we yeah. can talk about all kinds of other stuff. Perfect. So uh, it's like 50 minutes in. So uh, we're gonna be making a part two. So we are made it all the way here to 2012, and that's the, the season I started playing. So we we also see results back in the PTCG archive. Mm. You're going to be seeing faces. I'll also have results so I can back the stories up of what the, the structure looked like during those days. But what we can take down from this uh, part one video is that rotations are not always consistent. Sometimes they rotate four sets. Sometimes yep. they rotate an entire block, six, seven sets. It doesn't matter for them. It is random. Sometimes in <laughs> August, sometimes in September, sometimes October, yeah. sometimes mid-season. It depends sometimes. on how the, how the wind is turning. It's like uh, October or maybe like with a, 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 a wheel. They like they spin the wheel. Yeah, and it depends. Is there oh. a sable line in the format right now or not? Or is there a seismitoad that's annoying? There's a lot of things. That is there, is there a pandemic? Uh, do we actually need to rotate? Is, Mm -hmm. Are there broken combos? So That's rotation, all, all, they have to like monitor it nonstop and, and 
they they probably have a team that is going to that going over rotations and when they need to happen when they don't happen. Oh yeah, this this is a, this is way more advanced than we would give it credit for, I believe, because they also they probably even sit in the laboratory. They even sit there like there's there's so many things happening behind the scenes that you and me don't know. A lot of people also don't know out there. Maybe somebody knows something, but well, a lot of this is guarded company secrets, right? And there's people sitting there, they're spending, that's their job to make sure this is work, works out in the best way possible. And the thing is also us. the card game is designed to be uh, played with the sets that come out like in Japan in that way and that structure. But mm. we sometimes rotate stuff that Japan doesn't rotate and vice versa. And it's, it's... Yeah, again, another reason for this being different. Ah, this again, we can talk about this for, for a long time. I think we, we can fill like 24 hours filled with random knowledge. I think it's possible. <laughs> Oh, then we should invite more people in as well. That would be cool. Yeah, cool that would be cool. So uh, yeah, I think uh, we're going to be leaving it here at uh, part one. We're supposed to talk about rotation part one. That's the, I'll be I think, I think that's I think that's okay as, uh, okay as enough. And uh, maybe I should also make a video on that on my own channel at some point as well. Yeah, a little more, make... say, math inspired, I think, at that point. Perfect. <laughs> So uh, yeah, thanks uh, for uh, joining me on uh, today's topic. We we talked about literally almost everything throughout the the video. It's just super cool. Always love uh, like strolling around like TCG land and the old school archives. It's fun. It's fun. Good old times. Good so old uh, times. yeah, if you want to leave your uh, socials and stuff, where can people find you? Oh, they can find me on Stefan's Classroom as well, where uh, when if they don't find university stuff there, there is Pokemath, and that's good stuff. Working on uh, working on more episodes right now. Crack, go crack some math and see what uh, see what this is uh, going to turn out to be. Yeah, otherwise, uh, otherwise, uh, hit me up on Twitter. Yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, lovely for having you on. And we're going to be definitely making that part two because we're here stranded with Dark Explorers. <laughs> yeah, indeed. We will, we will pick up where we left off. Right? Okay, thank you everybody for watching. If you enjoyed these videos, let me know by slapping the hell out of the like button. Subscribe for more content. As uh, I, I'd love to do these more. Get some guests on, talk about Pokemon throughout the history because it doesn't always need to be TCG Live for specific reasons we're not going to be talking about in this video because we're not going off-road again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow for another TCG uh, upload. So uh, thanks for watching. Peace. Bye.